Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got a little bit of an introduction. Maybe you've never heard of this man before, but you're going to hear about him now. Now, those of you who have heard of Peebo Bryson, here he is. It's 5, 24 in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take the time to explain a couple of things. If y'all don't mind, hey, Peebo, thank you, brother. He's talking about being into something and not knowing what he's going to do. Perhaps we can help you. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple of things that I think are of some import because some people are interested. Oh, I don't want Yandex. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. We want this one. And I just want to tell you guys something. This video right here, the one about the police. Now, see how this one shows as the last one? It is not the last one that was put up. A moment ago, it only showed the police one as being the last one put up. Ladies and gentlemen, the one talking about following a police report, that was the first one put up of these three. However, this took seven hours. It is a 15 minute video. It took seven hours to upload. The other two took two hours to upload. What I want to explain is that this is what YouTube is doing to persons like myself. It's designed to frustrate. I ain't got time to be frustrating. No plans, no nothing like that. Look, let me explain what I did. And I am making sure that Google gets an understanding of this. From the very beginning that I've been doing videos, I've been putting music in the background because I understood the Fair Use Act. As long as it's for educational purposes, they can shut up. Okay? Literally. That simple. Ladies and gentlemen, YouTube wasn't allowing people to put music in the background of their videos. They were giving them warnings and strikes. And I insisted that Google didn't have the authority. Now, Google, what it did is it set up contracts with Sony Music and a couple of the other large record companies. And basically, as long as their algorithm picks up a digital signature, Google says copyright infringement. It doesn't care about the Fair Use Act unless it does it. Okay, so they automatically, when they sense music, that's what they do. But however, this video right here, not the consult, this video here, this video here, this video here, they all three have music in it. But if you notice, there are absolutely no strikes. That's the problem with the algorithm because they sat up there and messed with the videos and took so long to put it up that the video... <laughs> The algorithm couldn't listen for the music in the background. Oops. Now, that's the first thing. Now, you, you see the discrepancy in the amount of views for each one? Ladies and gentlemen, we know that this is probably 34,000 and not 1,000, but this is what Google does. Now, let me go ahead and explain. There are some sites that actually give you the analytics. Not Google's analytics, because Google's analytics is designed and manipulated. But they give you the actual analytics. So let me get across to you what's going on so that you guys can understand. I've had several people as of late tell me that I had to resubscribe to your channel. It's been going on for several years now, and people telling me they had to resubscribe. I don't know why I'm not receiving notifications. You're not receiving notifications because this is what Google is doing. I don't know why they think this is a deterrent, that this is going to stop me. I don't think they understand me. Tell them, people. I don't think they understand. 
the more you stand in front of me as I'm trying to move, the more I'm going to keep moving forward. Eventually, you're going to get the, out of my way. Now, do me a favor, everybody. I want you to hear this because those of you who are not listening need to be listening. There was a young man named Brian. Brian was in a mortgage foreclosing situation where the bank was literally saying, hey, mother, you're going to get out of that house because we're going to take it. And we're going to put you and your family on the street. And Brian decided he wanted to check out some remedies. He didn't come to me because he didn't know about me. So he went to some other people who had taken some of the information I've published, including the contracts, and they combined it with some other things. Exactly what I say, take my stuff and make it yours. Don't just take my stuff and use my stuff and profit off of my stuff. Uh -uh, you take it and you make it yours. You better make some alterations. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when he did that, this is pebbles, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all don't get the understanding, pebbles and pebbles. Yeah, that's right. It was going in sequence. Um, he went to these individuals and they helped him. They put together the trust agreement and they had him pay attention, quick claim his property into the trust. Ladies and gentlemen, take your properties and put it into a trust. If you don't know what you're doing, if you have a sad pack, create a appendix or a schedule a to your trust and put your property in your trust why do you think we gave you the sat pack in the first place i keep telling you everyone we can't tell you what to do that's not our job ladies and gentlemen it's not our job to tell you you need to do this or do that. Why do you think if you're trying to set up one of those asset protection trusts in the Cayman Islands, it's going to cost you over $10,000? See, that's where they do everything for you. We gave you all a discounted rate for a reason, so that you can do your research as to what to do with your trust. Your trusts are irrevocable. They are permanent. So they're still there for you to use. You don't have to show your trust to nobody. Trust me. You don't have to show your trust to nobody. Pay attention. Trust me. The only thing you have to have is that declaration, certificate of trust, and let's see, declaration, certificate of trust, and I, sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now. There are three of them. Declaration of trust, certificate of trust, and I can't think right now. I'm sorry. We done talked about it on video. There are three items that you need to have, but the declaration of trust and the certificate of trust or certification of trust, same thing as the certificate of trust. And there's one more item, and I cannot think about it right now. I'm sorry. I was drawing a blank because my mind is on this video and getting some other information to you. But it is important that you put your properties in trust. I don't care if you're going through foreclosure and you're still in foreclosure. See, I cannot tell you anything other than what the young lady did is she put her property in a trust. Can't tell you what she did to get the bank to understand. I don't owe you no money, mother, okay? But she will be starting an organization. We will be talking later today about that so that she can provide you services. Like I said, I have too many companies. I can't be involved in another. But I'm going to show them what they need to do to get that thing going and to try to help some of you. And then we'll send some of you her way. I know some of you are desperate. But ladies and gentlemen, we cannot make the buggy go any faster than the horses can take it. Okay? There is no motor on the horse and buggy. It's only horsepower. It is not no mechanical power here. So y'all are going to have to be patient. I know you're desperate. But when you're desperate and you rush, you cause injury to somebody. So we ain't into causing you no injury. So y'all just going to have to bear with me. We have two methods that we just found out about that we don't see anybody else using. And if they are, they ain't told nobody.
Now, I understand the reason why they ain't told nobody, especially about these two. Okay, but the first one I told you all about that could disrupt everything, I'm not trying to destroy the economic system because I know that it could. I know the ripple effect. I can see the consequences. That's what I do. It's not just a matter of providing people information. It's a matter of knowing everything that's going on, ladies and gentlemen. Everything. Looking at all the possibilities. And once you consider all the possibilities, you say, no, it's not worth it. And I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Because I'm not willing to live in that type of a society where everything collapses. Sorry, I'm not willing to do that. Because that puts people to too much suffering. <sighs> you see where we are right now? We're to the point where I don't have to rush to get other information. I can now focus on why I wanted to do this video. I was in the midst of waking up. I woke up at 4, and then I do the thing of going back to sleep and then waking up again so I can be fully awake. And I was going to get up at 4, but I said, no, stay in bed for another hour, and I did. And as I was getting up for the final time and taking the dogs out, who let the do You tell them mother- I let the stupid mother dogs out, all right? I apologize. Uh, that's Sky, and I don't feel like listening to that. But this is, no, we can't do Hall of Notes because that kisses on my lips thing, whoo, y'all y'all know how about, how they feel about them Hall and them Oates. The biggest selling, largest selling, most selling dual male group in the history of music. You don't mess with Hall and Oates. Come on now. And they ain't going to let me mess with no Hall and Oates. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, I was thinking, and lately I've been thinking about my mommy and my daddy. My mommy, it will be five years, February 3rd, that she passed away. Now I have a, uh, well, they're not my family anymore. I haven't disowned them. They've disowned me because I didn't go to her funeral, because I didn't show the, um, the normal reaction that they expect it, and I don't care. I, I mean, honestly, I don't care. Look, when I talk about people who are not my people, that's not my family. My family stopped being my family during the operation when I couldn't remember who they were. They don't realize it, but I did. I don't know those people is what I would say. They didn't realize that, but that's what I would tell everyone. It was like being in a house of strangers, although I knew who everybody was and knew who their names were. I didn't know them. They were strangers to me. And they've been strangers to me ever since. I just, it's just the way it is. It's not the way I want it to be. It is, this is what happens when the doctors pump you full of an experimental medication that they know what the side effects are and they never tell you what those side effects are. Don't worry about it. The doctors will pay for what they pay for. I, 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 I don't need your opinion. I don't need you telling me how things is and how things should be and I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that. Keep your mother ideas to yourself. This is my life. And I don't care about your attitude. If you got an attitude, you can take it and you can go into the stratosphere with your altitude. I mean, attitude, excuse me. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I was sitting back thinking about my father. When my father passed away, under whatever circumstances, but it wasn't the stories we got, somebody lied. And several somebody's lied. Okay, and I knew that I was being lied to. My brothers, my sisters, my family, friends knew we were being lied to. They didn't say it to the people who were doing the lying. They, they kept it to us, ourselves. And as I told them, we had no proof. And until we had no proof, we had to rely on what we were told. Because that's all we had to go by is what we were told. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see if I can explain it in English. My father went fishing. My father came back dead. Okay? Just that simple. You hear about it all the time. People go fishing. 
next thing you know, they are missing because they drowned in the water. They fell into the water. Oh, my stars. Oh, my God. Amazing, huh? Anyway, let me see if I can um, explain why my father came to my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, this is to show you my thinking as a 15-year-old kid. When my father died, in the month of, I believe it was November, December, it was definitely uh, several months after he died, but October, November, December, I called the Social Security Administration. And I told the Social Security Administration, no, remember, I'm a kid. I said, excuse me, my father just passed away. Okay, and where are the benefits to my family? Where are the benefits to my mother since he's passed away? We are his children. I know for a fact that we're supposed to receive something. We are not supposed to go on with nothing and having to struggle without him because he was a source of income. This was what I told the Social Security Administration. And they literally told me, well, sir, your father did not work enough, blah, blah, and he didn't do this, blah, blah, and so there is, blah, blah. You ignorant mother... Ladies and gentlemen, I knew that there was something out there. Now I know that there was a trust. Okay? Nope, we're not going to do this, Fleetwood, not today. I'm not ready for that right now. But we're going to do a little bit of aloe black, and he's talking about wanting to be with somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that people have trusts. We know that people have estates. I know that my father had an estate. And the rule is, if you don't bring a claim in on someone's estate within three years, then it reverts to the state. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the game they play all the time because why they don't tell us the procedure. There I was, a 15-year-old kid, trying to figure out the procedure for accessing my father's account. Now, it, all you got to do is go back and think about what I was doing at the age of 15. Because, hold on, Al, give me a second. Because I knew something, ladies and gentlemen. Not because I had heard it from somebody. Nobody told me nothing about this. I knew this based upon listening to the stupid news. Pay attention. My mother made us watch the news. Pay attention. She made us watch the news. All right, y'all, the news is on. Get on in here. I'm not joking. Evening news? Every single day we watch the evening news. For the most part, with the exception of Saturday. But the Sunday evening news? And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? We watch the evening news. Her saying was, if we didn't know what was going on in the world? Okay, do you understand? So we had to watch the news. That's why I can tell you remembering what Ronald Reagan had to say. So by watching the news and listening to those reports and listening to what was going on, I knew. I seen too many other people who died and their family received money. So why couldn't my family receive the same, was my thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, has anything changed? Was there something wrong with my thinking? No. Just like there's nothing wrong with your thinking when you start to realize something isn't right. When you start to realize something is wrong, when you start to realize, wait a minute, did you see what the court just did to me? Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you so that you can see that it's not me. They, I, I know the system's pissed off at me, okay? I know they've been pissed off at me since they tried to keep me on probation for 25 years. And I sat up there and found a law in a court case that happened the same year because that was what I did. I looked into the law when it came to my circumstances. I had no clue how to represent myself to the court. Represent myself to the court? That's right, Re represent myself to the court. I had no idea how to do that. But I was successful. Because they put me on probation, and I realized, wait a minute, the maximum sentence, look, they put me on 20 years probation when the maximum sentence was two years! I apologize. You'll have to excuse me, because I'm emotional right now. That shows you I didn't know what I was doing. They put me on probation for 20 years 
for a maximum sentence of two years. What the? F no, 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 no. I went to court. I wrote him a motion. I said, hey, I'm rejecting probation. Why? Because the law says if I reject probation, the only thing they can do is give me, pay attention, jail time for the maximum term of the sentence. They can't aggravate it. If I ain't did nothing else, if I ain't murdered nobody in jail or anything like that, there is nothing they can do. Well, it turns out I had already served the jail term. Because they could only give me the minimum sentence, which I already served, because they have to give me credit for time served, they would literally have to release me the next day. They knew they would have to release me the next day, and the judge aggravated the sentence, repeating the exact same thing the trial court said. Ladies and gentlemen, the law was that they cannot aggravate the sentence unless there was new information that was so shocking to the conscience, okay? That was it. It had to be new information that shocked the conscience. Well, this judge repeated the same thing the sentencing judge said, so that means there was no new information. And the courts have ignored me ever since. What I'm promising you is that they will not be ignoring me anymore. See, I don't let things go. See, the, the issue is, as I just told you, I knew that by rejecting probation that I didn't have to do probation. I could do jail time. So they gave me two more years, and I went and I did the two years. Maximum sentence. And they put me in SMU2. What's SMU? Supermax. They had a Supermax 1 and a Supermax 2. And I got put in Supermax. Oh, what the matters? That's right. That's where they put me every single time. Why? Because they want to try to jeopardize, put my life in jeopardy, and they've done it every single time. I am so glad that I served Jehovah, and I'm so glad that Jehovah... Wait, how can you talk about going to jail and serving Jehovah? Because what most people don't understand, but I do, when you sin against my God, and many of us do every single day, some of us every single minute of the day, but if you are truly repentant and you go to him and you apologize to him sincerely, he reads hearts, so he knows whether or not you're being sincere. And you do so with a complete heart, and you apologize, and you vow to him not to do it or repeat it again, and you carry out that vow like I have done, then he doesn't punish you eternally like some of these ignorant, stupid churches teach people. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he sends you to hell, and you got permanent... Permanent brain damage because it's permanent damnation. Nowhere in the scripture does it say he sends somebody to hell and torments them permanently. What it does say is he does throw people into what's known as the lake of fire. But these idiots take the lake of fire as something literal instead of what it means. Tells you in Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse 15, it means the second death. Tells you in Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 8, the lake of fire means... The second death. It tells you what it means. It means death. Death is the opposite of life. It means that they're not living. They're not in the spirit form. You can't burn a spirit. Nobody pays attention to the symbolism. Oh yeah, you're going to burn in hell. Excuse me, people. The Bible never said anybody was going to burn in somebody's hell. The lake of fire is not hell. Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse 13 through 15, specifically says that hell was thrown into the lake of fire. You can't throw something into itself. Oh, no, I'm going to put you inside yourself, mother... Okay, you cannot do it. It's... God, this is what going to church did to people. They sit up there and they listen to somebody talk and talk and talk, and they don't do the research for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you hear me saying this on every video? I know y'all hear me saying this on every video, because what I can tell you for a fact is every single moment of conversation, I tell you, you must do your own research, your own homework. You can't take no man's word for nothing. You can't take my word for nothing. Verify my information. Don't just take what I'm saying and run with it. That's why you're getting in trouble, because you don't know it for yourself. And the courts know you don't know it for yourself. That's been my experience. When I didn't know everything, the courts knew I knew something. They played games. But when I knew what I knew, 
These idiots don't challenge me anymore, ladies and gentlemen. They just dismiss my stuff. They don't respond to it at all. They just dismiss it. No reason, no rhyme. They don't say it's this or it's that or this is irrelevant or it's frivolous or meritless. They don't say any of that regarding what I write because I don't write frivolous stuff. I put their own junk in front of them and I show the contradictions. And then I tell them what the law really is. Yes, I tell them what the law really is. I don't ask them what the law really is. I tell them what the law really is and I dare them to tell me I'm wrong. That's my way of doing things, ladies and gentlemen. So, here it is. I completed probation by completing a jail term, and I have the court records to prove that. I've introduced it into court ever since, yet they still get these convictions. How are they able to do this? Because they're ignoring the record. But this time, as I told my people, they said, well, let us do this. Let us file this. Let us file that. Let's do the um, filing of the bonds. You know, the, the, you know, you know, them bonds. Come on now. Come on, help me out. You know, what, what type of bonds do people normally file? And I said, are you talking about the bid bond, the performance bond? And so, yeah, yeah, let's file that. I said, why? Well, because I hear that gets people out of jail. You heard? Why would we do that? I said, no, you're going to sit back. My God has told me in his way through an understanding that that was not going to last, that they were going to release me. And guess what? I relied on my God. Yes, I still put the stuff in the record because that was me doing my part in reliance on my God. He doesn't require me to sit back and fold my hands talking about, oh, I'm just going to wait on him to do everything. He requires me to put forth some effort because it's because of my conduct that all of this was happening in the first place. You see, what I did, this is a consequence. We don't get to choose our consequences. Decisions, consequences. We make a decision, we have to suffer the consequence, whether it be bad a consequence or a good consequence, but we still contribute it to the circumstances, which means we have to contribute it to the working out of the circumstances, and he allows that. So I had to sit back and allow him to work things out. And what did they do? Out of the blue, the appeals court made a decision that made no sense. Nobody put that before the appeals court, but they overturned the case. But the way they overturned it, they tried to make it look like they didn't do nothing wrong. Even telling the trial court they could retry. And I told them just like this, I wrote it to them on motion. You ignorant, racist, prejudiced mother, go right ahead and try to retry me again, because this time I ain't gonna remain silent. This time, I'm going to put your whole system on trial, so let's play. Next thing I know, everybody's, uh, Your Honor, we're not going to retry. We're going to withdraw this. And they wouldn't even bring me to court for the hearings. They had three hearings without me being present, and I was pro se. And the law says that I had to be in court for every crucial hearing, period. Ain't no, there ain't no ways around it. They had a public defender stand in for a pro se individual. I didn't have standby counsel. I didn't ask for standby counsel. I even told them I ain't accepting your stupid standby counsel. And they had three hearings. So for that violation of due process, the appeals court says, no, nah, you ain't got no right to appeal that. Really? Y'all get to do what y'all want to do? So ladies and gentlemen, let's see if Atlantic Star can respond. <laughs> Was I dreaming? Wait, wait, wait. I thought they were supposed to follow the law. <clears throat> make sure you guys understand these are not courts of law so the next time you get in court and you're standing before a judge and you have to say something the very first words out of your mouth must be excuse me i'm sorry i don't i, I don't mean to be rash or I, I don't i don't even mean to sound like i am going to be difficult but I, I got a I got a question for for the court if it's okay. Well, we're gonna. Well, no, 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 no. My, I promise you, my question is very pertinent. Okay, what's your question? Is this a court of law? And when when I say law, I don't mean presumptions or 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 or, or appearance of law. I mean actual law, the law of the land. Is is this a court of law? And no, no, no. Yes or no? Don't please don't explain it because I'm not looking for an explanation. And you're telling me, I just need to know, is it or is it not a court of law? 
law of the land as expressed in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution for the state and for the United States. So are, are you a court of law? Oh, see, there you go, explaining it again. I just need a yes or no. You know how you always tell people, yes or no. So please, just yes or no. And if you can't answer it with a yes or no, then that means that you're not a court of law because I didn't ask you for an explanation. I don't need you to tell me what the law is. I just need for you to tell me if you're a court of law. And if you don't answer yes or no, then that means that you're trying to hide something because you know that you can sit up there and lie on that bench like a rug, you ignorant mother. And by lying, you're protected because you're presumed to be performing a judicial function, which means you're immune. So I can't believe anything that comes out of your mouth because you are a liar. And the law permits you to lie. Just, no, sorry, you are a liar. I can't believe what you say. You're not even under oath. See, you, how can you be under oath and be permitted to lie? So no, there's uh -uh, something wrong here. Uh -uh, I got it. Uh -uh, you need to prove to me that you ain't lying. It's supposed to be a fair trial. How can it be fairness if you get to lie and nobody else gets to lie but the prosecution and the police? See that's what see that's what it is right here. All of y'all get to lie, and equal protection of law says I can't lie because then you find me in contempt and perjury and all this other stuff. No, you ain't doing that to me, mother. Do you understand what's going on every day you go into court? This is happening to people every single day. And they're trying to figure out what they can do about it. Well, the first thing you can't do is get upset. What you have to do is put the facts on the record. You don't have to beat them in the head. You just have to say it. So I put everything on the record on paper. Why do you think they never respond to any of my documents? They, they even say, well, we received your document. No, <laughs> you received my affidavit. Say it right. Well, an affidavit is a document. I'm being technical. Oh, I didn't ask you to be technical. You don't get to be technical when you want to, okay? Well, anyway, he filed a general document, and the document blah, blah, blah basically said blah, 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 and so the court is not here to hear such things. Excuse me. You're not here to hear such things? Oh, I'm not trying to make you hear nothing. I'm trying to make you see that I can see you for who you are. So no, you will address the issues. And, and you may not think you're going to address the issues. You may want to be stubborn. But I guarantee you, you will address these issues. Because it will be here next year. It will be here the year after that. And it will be here for the next 40 years. But you will address the issue. Because I ain't going nowhere, honey. That's right, I said, honey, like what bees do? Yeah, honey, I ain't going nowhere, sugar. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, this is how I talk to the idiots. You can't do that because you're not there yet. See, they know that as long as I don't offend the court, there's nothing they can do. I can offend the judge all I want. Now, I can't offend him outright because he's a judicial officer, and offending the judicial officer in his capacity as a judicial officer is contempt of court, so I can't do that. But if he says something stupid, I can call him on it. If he says something that I know ain't law, I can call him on it. But the problem is, many of you don't know what the law is. And so you think that you're getting in there, people talking about being sovereign citizens. Would you idiots stop that? My people know better, but I got these these other people who are watching my videos who I can call idiots because you're calling yourself sovereign citizens and you ain't done no research. I keep telling all of you, a sovereign citizen literally is a group of people. It's not a single person. There's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. Well, a man is a sovereign of his own house. Yes, y'all go right ahead and believe all of that. But we're talking about the idiots who sit up there and go in court and talk about that they're sovereign. You ain't representing no people, you're representing yourself. So that should be out of your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ronnie Laws. And all right song, you know what I'm saying? The song is called Every Generation.
and I think it's an all right song, and he's going to take us on out of here right now. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this has been my thinking for years, since I was a child, and I give my, well, of course I give my God the total credit, because I've always loved and served my God, <clears throat> except for when I made mistakes! Anyway, but I also give credit to my mother, because, as I told you, when I was a child, I was four years old, no, I was actually five, sorry, I was school age, but I couldn't go to school because I was born in December, and being born in December, had to wait till the next year because you couldn't go to school until you were five years old that was etched in stone oh your birthday's two months from now oh your birthday's tomorrow oh i'm sorry school started today i'm sorry you gotta wait till next year and that's what they made me do and i as a five-year-old kid i couldn't understand it that didn't make any sense though technically at the time i was four and i couldn't understand that but I'll be five in December. Well, yeah, but they say you got to wait till next year. Next year? Do you know how long a year is for a child? That's an eternity. My mother had an understanding of that, and so she says, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do. When my brothers and sisters went to school, she saw me, saw the tears in my eyes. Mother said, nope, you and I are going to have school here. And so my mother and I had school every single day. And my brothers and sisters were a little bit jealous. We did homeschooling, y'all. Don't y'all understand? And my brothers and sisters would rather have been at home going to school, too. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, I will say that that had a great impact on my schooling because technically when I did get in class, I was not a year behind like everybody else. Do you know what I'm saying? I actually knew more than the other kids in school. And then because of that, because of my mother's teaching me, she became a teacher's assistant. She actually worked for the school for the rest of her life. The same school that I went to as a child as a result of that. See, my, even my brothers and sisters hadn't even put that junk together because they didn't know. This wasn't, see, my brothers and sisters don't realize the relationship me and my mother had. They didn't understand the relationship we had. It wasn't volatile. But they, well, why he get to talk to you like that? Because that's who he is. Okay, you don't worry about that. That's what my mother used to tell them. Okay, my mother knew that I was never disrespecting her, never would have disrespect her. My mother knew that I knew that words don't amount to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody can use words. Words don't mean nothing. That's why people can, people have been talking about me and saying things about me for so long. You can say what you want about me. The rule was, don't just don't put your hands on me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's who I was as a, as a child. You put your hands on me, and it's on. And I don't care. As I tell people, you got a knife in your hand, you better kill me. You do not come at me with no stupid knife. You do not come at me with no stupid gun, because it's on. Literally. I wasn't going to talk you out of it. I ain't got time for that. I'm not that way anymore. But that's how I was as a kid. Why? because I understood the reality of things. I understood threats didn't mean anything. Anybody can threaten someone, but it's someone's actions. And see, my problem was I had rage. I love the rapper rage. Anyway, I, because I thought it was a perfect name for a rapper, and her name was Rage, and man. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I had rage. It's still there, but I've suppressed it as much as I could so it doesn't come out. Oh yeah, we can tell, because we can hear it in your, don't worry about my rage, you ignorant mother. Anyway, what I'm trying to say to you all is this is the time of year where I think about my mother, because it's the anniversary of her death. And when July gets here, my father, because it's the anniversary of his death. When May gets here, my best friend, because it's the anniversary of his death. You see, I have anniversaries. They're not the anniversaries you all have. But see, here's the thing, as I told you before, I'm a servant of the true God, Jehovah, and I believe in the resurrection. I truly do. And I know that I will see my family members again, my friend again. Not because I'm going to go to heaven and they're going to be walking on streets and pearly gates and gold and, oh, wait. 
that sounds so perfect. No, because he gave his original promise. He created man to live on the earth. He did not create men to live in heaven. Yes, 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 the Bible does speak of some going to heaven, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about his original purpose. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the system has been trying to stop SACOM from carrying out its original purpose. SACOM is a trust bond organization. We create trust and bonds for people, backed by tax credits. That's been the organization from day one. People are saying, well, it's look how long it's taken. Because these are bonds, ladies and gentlemen. They take five years to mature. We couldn't go below the five-year maturity date because your bonds needed to have value. We just showed you. We've been showing you on video after video after video how we equate that value. But some of you, I'm in trouble now. I need money now. And I've been trying to tell you, I don't give a f what you need now. That ain't got nothing to do with me. SACOM is not concerned with your needs. And I'm, I'm being straight out. I'm not sitting up here sugarcoating nothing for you. SACOM ain't concerned about your stupid needs. Your stupid needs ain't got nothing to do with the organization. Your needs are your needs. We are about the many, not about the singular. No, ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't mean that we don't care about each one of you. That means that those of you who think that we're going to drop everything just for you, we're going to change our policies just for you, then you got problems. That's why we don't care about your needs, because you are a selfish, mother, ignorant, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> flocker, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and so with that being said, enough, literally enough, stop it. This is not your world. I don't know why you thought it was. SACOM is not here to take care of your individual needs. We have over 400 clients, ladies and gentlemen. Then we have at least 15 different organizations because each SAT pack is its own organization. Each SAT pack, the SAT pack ones, the Q pack, the SAT pack twos, the original SAT pack group, the prime, the plus, and the uh, omega, each one of those sat packs are their own group. They're their own separate group. They don't share the tax credits with each other. They're, each group has its own allotment of credits. Why? Why did we do it that way? So that one group couldn't siphon from the other and another group couldn't hurt the other. Again, this is an organization. We're not trying to get over on anybody. We are trying to give them more than the value. I promise you, in a couple of weeks, not months, but a couple of weeks, I'm going to tell you what is the baseline amount of tax credits each person gets with a SAT pack. I promise you, your eyes are going to bug out of your head. It's up to you right now to do your research and figure out how to use the tax credits. We cannot tell you that, nor are we going to tell you that. That is not our job. This is not a group thing. This is not a movement. We are not here to work with you on figuring things out. That's your job. Literally, that's your job to do your research. You have to do the research. It's not for us to do your research. It literally is not for us to do your research. We are only providing a service and a product, okay? You go to Walmart and you get their customer service and they provide you with a product, you have to call the manufacturer to find out how to use the product. Am I not correct? So what the, are you asking us how to use your tax credits for? That's not our job. What are you asking us how to use a trust for? That's not our job. Okay? Just that simple. It's not our job to tell you how to operate. You have to go to the people who created the so-called tools you're using to operate. We can only tell you that here's the tool and you can use it to operate with this. So we're giving you tax credits and we're telling you, you can use your tax credits to offset your debt. You have to now, Figure it out, how to offset your debt. 
you have the tax credits, but you have at least another month to figure it out. Sorry, you have at least another month before we start issuing the tax credits. We're, our hope is to do it before March 1st, but you have another month before we start issuing it to each of you. And if you don't get it by March 1st, do not call us, do not email us, because we're not going to rush. We're going to be starting that day. So you each will get some type of notification if you've had a change of email address. Okay? If you've had a change of email address, we will be providing you do not write support, do not write support, either of the supports with your new email address. We are going to give you an email to write with your current email address. You will have to send in proof of who you are and that that was your previous email address or you will get nothing because we will only send it to the email addresses we have on file. Well, I already sent you a change of email address. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And you're going to have to do it again. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's just the way it is. I would like to do things the way it was, but we don't live in the past anymore. We live in the present. So, I don't want to take up any more of your time. This is 46 minutes. I know the end of this particular video, you've gotten more information than you wanted, but at least you got a clarity and an understanding as to how things are and what our goals and missions were. Well, you could have given it to us like the regular people who do business, how they try to make it seem all sugar-coated and everything. Why are you not sugar-coating your stuff and just sitting up here talking to us like we some little children? Because you're acting like it. We tell you that it has a five-year maturity, and many of you are demanding that I've even had, I had one woman tell me, and I said woman. That's right, I'm calling you a woman. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. Tell me that she was in a certain situation and she needed access to her stuff now. Excuse me? I, I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't got nothing to do with the SACOM organization. What your situation is. We didn't create that situation. So don't bring us into your mess. Okay? We're going to stay on point. We're going to follow the rules. See, people don't understand. We don't follow the rules. It invalidates the whole process. Oops. Why would we do that? Why would we take something that is so etched in stone that they do for all of the rich folks and just mess it up for ourselves because we want to make the rules up as we go along? Shame on y'all. Those of you who have insisted that we change the rules just for your situation because you're special. Shame on you. That's what I'm saying. We have a lot of special people. Y'all remember the show? You special. You important. And you, you, you just got problems. Sorry, like I said, if you ain't watched the help, you need to watch the help. As a matter of fact, I think I will watch the help on Saturday. That's going to be my Saturday evening movie before I go to sleep. Uh-oh. Y'all hear that little buzzer going off? That means that time is up, y'all. That's my smaller solar array, and it can't handle anything because I didn't fully charge it yesterday. I let it deplete. But my larger solar array, all right. You hear it right there? Okay, hold on, y'all. Let me go ahead and take care of this, this warning light because it's getting on my nerves. Y'all hear all that noise? Hold on. Shut up. All right, that takes care of that. No more warning lights. And I'm on the Mac PC, so no more warning lights, y'all. All right, we're going to let y'all get back to y'all days, y'all mornings, y'all nights, and y'all winters and y'all storms. Those of you who are on the East Coast, I do feel sorry for you because you do have that nor'easter that you're going to be running into and the storm coming all the way up the coast, the East Coast. And apparently, because y'all so cold over there, because it's Arctic weather, y'all ain't getting no rain. Y'all getting snow and wind. That's right. You got that warm storm coming up there, meeting that cool air. 
So you better believe there might be some tornadoes. So buckle down. I hope you guys have your food and your heat. And I hope those of you who don't have enough heat can do the best you can. Um, I'm sorry our world is this way, that they make it to where people have to suffer, all for the sake of, for nothing, because these companies want more and more of something that has no value. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a propped up system. We live in a matrix. A matrix is basically a system where the reality is that nothing exists. That people are living in a fantasy world. Well, we live in a fantasy world. How is it that we live in a fantasy world? Money doesn't mean anything. Material things don't mean anything. Wait, hold on. You guys didn't get it? Like I said, my father, I give the man all the credit in the world. Why? Because my father taught me that the value of things. And see... Over the years, I have realized, sorry, I'm plugging into the other solar array because I needs to. Over the years, I have come to realize the following, that there was no such thing as a brand new car. There's no such thing as a brand new boat. There's no such thing as a brand new house. There is no such thing as a brand new anything when it comes to the earth. Everything is used, recycled. There is nothing new under the sun. What, you didn't get what he was saying? I did. He was being literal, that there is nothing new under the sun. So why do you hear people saying brand new? Because that's a brand, people. That's not a reality. Why do you think the courts operate off of prima facie or the appearance of law? We live in a matrix, ladies and gentlemen. It was created, well, this one was created in 1933. It's all appearances. Go and look at the word prima facie. It means appearance of law. It's not the actual law. They created a system. It's called a court system. They created a system, the economy. They created a system. Ladies and gentlemen, they created this junk. And everybody goes according to what they want them to understand. They said, hey, we want you to respect our system of justice. We are concerned about the image of justice in America because America's justice system is the best system in the world. That's right, because this matrix has been modeled and copied throughout the world. That's why they mandatorily make sure everybody follows their system. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 617. It's time for me to get some work done because I have a doctor's appointment this morning and I have to get ready for it. So I will let you all get to your day. I do want to thank you for letting me share this information with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, Please have a good day, stay out of trouble, and I hope, again, the information was beneficial. Gotta go.